This video is discussing how to invest in your company by expanding and improving your physical plant. Now, doing this generally requires a balance between cash and investing for the future. What's happening here is that your company might be selling something like $40 million worth of equipment. However, in order to get better, you have to make significant improvements in your plant. Those improvements are not able to be funded out of your profit. As a result, you have to get the cash from somewhere else to do this. However, if you don't get the cash to do this, your company will be left behind by the other teams that do act more aggressively. So let me walk you through some options here. Let's look at the company we have right now. Right now we have ABLE and A2. This company here has got a choice. They need to decide if they want to invest in their existing product ABLE or in a new product called A2 that's finishing R&D this year. The limitation they have is they can only spend up to $11 million. The game puts a limit on you that only allows a certain amount of investment into the company. This is also limited by your finance, but that's usually not as much of a problem, so we'll talk about that second, secondly. So first what you need to do is decide how much you want to dedicate to A2. Typically you do this by looking at the reports. Look at the A2, which is going to be a high-tech product. In the high-tech market, you might have five or six products, and a total market size is something like two or three million units. If you divide the total number of units that are on the marketplace by the number of products, you get a rough idea of how many units each team should be able to, to sell. So for example, this might be around something like five to 600 a turn. If you need to sell 500 a turn, or that's your goal, you need to have capacity to build that. Capacity is a little bit confusing because you have two shifts. You pay money to, get to buy a factory and use it during the day. However, you can also use it at night. So if you look at A2 or ABLE, the first row says how many units can they produce in the day shift. You can also produce this many units at night too. So ABLE is currently able to produce 2,000, sorry, 2,020,000 units. And again, like we're reading this in thousands here. A2 then has nothing right now. So if I was to give it a capacity of 100 units for its first shift, it will be able to have 200 units of production. So if my goal is to do around 600, 500 units of, of sales, I need to have a capacity of somewhere around 300 at minimum, probably more like four to give me a little bit of spare room there. If I hit recalculate, you'll see that the numbers down here have changed to show that buying 400,000 units of capacity is gonna cost me $4 million. Now at the moment though, you notice that I don't have any automation rating. What that means is that I have all of these units being made by hand with no machinery. This is really inefficient. Automation rating is a value that you can be between zero and 10. 10 means that you have complete automation in your factory. One means you have almost no automation in your factory. So currently for ABLE, ABLE's got a rating of 4.1. If you think of it from a cost perspective, each point of automation is gonna save you $1.20 per unit sold. So if I put this to a one and recalculate, you'll notice now that the cost has gone the cost is going to go up a bit. Sorry, two, excuse me. If I do this in two and go on, you'll notice that the cost is going to go up now. So before when I had an automation rated basically one, now it's an automation rated of two, it's going to cost me $1.6 million. If I want to make it fully automated, I go to a 10 and recalculate, and now it's going to cost me $18 million. If I split the difference in the middle, I'm left with about $10 million investment. So having a plant of 400 units that are able to produce in the first shift and 400 in the second shift with sort of a mid-level of automation is going to cost my company $10 million. Now, that's not bad, um, but I also have to think about ABLE as well. For ABLE, well, currently we have an automation rating of 4.1. Let's see what would happen if we increase that to, say, a 6. If I increase it to a 6, you'll see that it's going to cost $7 million to make that improvement. Now over here you see all my numbers turn to red. They turn to red because the total investment is bigger than what the game will allow. The game only allows me to invest $10 million, $11 million this round. So now I have to decide what's more valuable to me. Would I rather make ABLE more automated and make more money on it, or put my money into A2 instead? You could kind of hit a medium, like what if I do like a three and a five? Kind of pull back a little bit on automation on each one. And now I'm back inside the limit there. The other option here too is you can also sell off capacity. So for ABLE, right now I might be a little bit on the high side for how much I actually want to be able to produce. 
if I'm only selling 1,500 a round and expect to sell that many for the next few rounds, I don't really need to have quite that much capacity. So I could get rid of something like 200 units. When I do so, you'll notice that the number here decreases. I'm now selling off part of the capacity, which basically evens out to adding automation. And now I have more cash available to make improvements. So this is why you don't want to have too much capacity. If you put money into capacity, that's money that is not available for automation. So overall, it's kind of a balance here. You have to figure out for the next round, what kind of units do you want to sell and how many of each? And then try and do the maximum investment you can to improve the automation. Note too that this physical plant decisions do not kick in the current year. You're going to, as I do this, I can't sell A2 this year. I still have zero as my production capacity here. However, next set of decisions, I will have 400 suddenly pop up here, and then I can start making 800 around to compensate. Now I've done a big improvement here. I have a $10 million investment, but the reality is I didn't have that much money in cash just sitting around. So I'm going to go to finance and see how to raise money to pay for this. Now if I look at my finance screen right now, it looks like I have cash. The reason I have cash though is because the game is currently forecasting a really high profitability and selling out all my goods. If I go back to the marketing screen, you'll notice I don't have any forecast. That means the game has said I'm going to sell off every single unit I produce. I'm going to put in a more reasonable expectation, about 1,400 units. Once I do this, it means I'm going to have some cash tied up in inventory. If you think back to production we talked about previously, if I produce this many units and don't sell all of them out, I'm going to have cash that's stuck and left over. Now when I go to finance, you see now I have a negative value. This means that if the worst case happens, that I'm going to run out of cash. Cash is being sucked up into inventory, and as a result, I don't have it available to do things like payroll. So the game gives you three different ways that you can raise cash. One is by issuing stock. If you notice here, there's a stock symbol right there. With the stock, I can go ahead and issue up to 5.7 million. So as let's say I issue five million dollars of stock, and you'll see that my cash balance now goes from negative two million and two and a half million to positive two and a half million. So now I've got cash. You also see that the share here of common stock gets larger. Let me do another option. I could also raise $5 million in loans. When I try that, you'll see that common stock gets a much smaller piece here and long term and current debt have expanded based on if I did it in a short term or a long term. I still have cash, but now what's happening is that I'm using fewer shareholder dollars to fund the company. That makes the stockholders happy because they don't want me to have a lot of people buying into the company. They want to have their dollars go a really long way in funding how the company is going to work and would rather have me fund with debt. Now the downside of this is that debt costs money. If you look at the interest rates of close to 10%, you figure for this $5 million that I'm borrowing for one year, that's going to cost me half a million dollars. That half a million comes directly out of my profit. So doing this and borrowing cash in a large amount like this gives you ability to improve your company. However, it's costly in that it costs you profitability. However, if you do the expansion carefully and you always invest in automation, you'll find that, you, that the money is much more beneficial than going without and trying to do it bootstrapping or going slow. So it's really important in the game that you have to borrow money and you have to use that money to improve your automation rating. Now once you finish with this, you also notice that you have not just the short-term borrowing, but also a long-term borrowing. The difference between short and long-term is that a short-term has to be returned at the end of each year. In other words, if you look at this round right here, last round I borrowed $3.3 million. That $3.3 million has to be given back, and so now I have to, got to replace it with more debt going on. So a short-term debt, you have got to issue it every single round. With long-term debt, you don't have to do that. It stays with the company for basically the entire game. So generally what you want to do is you want to have a focus on long-term debt, and then you balance that out with some short-term debt. So the long-term debt ends up paying for the long-term improvements, and short-term debt can pay for short stuff like, like your inventory excess. Anyway, so that's the basic idea of how to figure out uh, the, the plant expansion options. The key is to first get all of your decisions set up correctly with the production schedule and with the forecast, then do the maximum investment here, and then go into your decisions, look at finance, and make sure that you have some cash left over. You generally want to have a decent cushion of cash in case your worst case estimate was too optimistic. 
It's usually better to sacrifice some profit and make sure you've got a good cushion of cash than hope for the best and just and then run out of cash. Anyway, we'll do a future video to talk about some of the other aspects of the game like TQM and some of the ratios. But for now, that should get you started in working out how to do finances and how to improve your plant operations.